Hello, everyone. My name is Tracy. I am honored to have this time to share with you a little bit about my son, Nolan Kelly. Nolan passed away last year, July 2nd, 2020. He was my first of two children and my only son. From a young age, Nolan was sensitive and shy. He and I would um, go on many playdates to help him overcome his shyness and develop friendships. Everyone always liked him, parents and teachers included. In grade one, we enrolled him in French immersion and this was not his thing. We learned a few years later that he had a form of dyslexia, which would have made it very frustrating for him to try and learn one language, let alone two. In spite of the challenges he had in grade one, his teacher adored him, so much so that when she had her first baby later in that year, she named him Nolan. In grade four, he won a citizenship award for the entire junior grades. Throughout school, he struggled academically, was always somewhat shy, but always instantly liked. Nolan had a quiet way about him, drawing people to him. At home, we spent many hours playing board and card games, lots of laughter, teasing the loser with various victory songs. We spent many summers at cottages, fishing, swimming, building large campfires at night. I remember trying to play video games with him, rock band was one of our favorites, along with Mortal Kombat, which I still have no idea what buttons I press, but occasionally I won. I miss all these small things and so much more. As Nolan grew, he entered a strong youth group where his faith in God seemed to grow. He made great friendships, met his first girlfriend, and went on youth retreats. He was very eager every Friday night to head out and worship with his friends. Around this time, high school was ending and Nolan had decided he wanted to enter the military. I remember bringing him downtown to write the admittance test. He was excited and a little nervous, but in classic Nolan words said, I got this mother. When I went to pick him up afterwards, I could see the disappointment and sadness on his face. He had failed. I think at this point, something changed in him. He was hurt angry with God, and really didn't know what to do next. This was all that he was sure he was going to do. So soon after this, he began drinking more. Uh, Nolan had some issues with kidney stones, and he required uh, visits to the ER to help him with the pain. Nolan also had his wisdom teeth out around this time. On several different occasions, he was prescribed a small amount of oxycodone. I remember thinking, why would a dentist or ER, ER doctor give a young man this? I think he really enjoyed the escape that the drug gave him. I believe that from this he started using other drugs, including heroin. At the time, Nolan was working. He was going into work extra whenever needed. He even moved up to floor supervisor. Anytime we would get together, he always seemed happy, smiling, and of course was dressed in his usual unique Nolan style. It was not until he called me one day asking to come live with my husband and I in Armprior that he told me he needed a change. He had quit his job and wanted to move. I wasn't aware of all the circumstances at the time, but now know that he did this in an effort to move away from, his, from the friends he was using with and to get out of the area, a new start. Nolan found a job the very next day, um, actually the very first day he came out. Uh, he just had a way with people, as I said, and he was instantly likable. Things were pretty good for about a year. Then I started to notice the increase in the number of empty bottles, increased time in his room away from us. And one night I went and searched his room. I was heartbroken to find all types of drug paraphernalia. Confronted with the truth, Nolan wept and agreed he needed help and praised God for this. Within one week, he was admitted to Jericho Road. So this is where I just want to take a moment and reach out to anyone struggling right now with addiction or whom have a family member in treatment or who have also, like myself, lost their loved one to addiction. Reaching out and admitting the need for help and actually stepping into a program takes so much strength. There is nothing weak about this. It's scary and unknown. Anyone that can.
can do this, no matter the is a brave, courageous, and strong individual. Jericho Road gave me my boy back. For seven months, Nolan did endless hours of study, personal reflection, sitting in groups, and sharing his deepest hurts, fears, anxieties, and secrets. He and his sister reconciled their relationship as the drugs had pushed them apart. What a brave and difficult thing all this was, but he was doing it. I would pick him up almost every weekend and we would laugh. He would be my car DJ, switching from song to song, genre to genre. We talked about the things he would do when he graduated. We were gonna get matching tattoos. He wanted to get his motorcycle license so we could ride together. He felt purpose. He felt that he wanted to join an organization and spread the good news of the gospel. His perspective on what was important in life had changed. I saw a true confidence building in him, real smiles and laughter. I saw my boy who struggled academically all his life, reading and writing volumes and articulating it all so well. Today, over a year later, the shock has worn off, the emptiness has not. Every celebration, there is an empty seat. My heart hurts so much. I miss the way he would call me mother and to know I will never hear him say that again. This past year has been a haze, honestly not really knowing how to navigate it all. Recently, I've started some grief counseling and I have started to unpack the heavy load that I've been carrying. My greatest source of strength and comfort comes from God. I am reminded that Jesus wept for his friend Lazarus when he died. Jesus knows our pain, suffering, and sorrow. A quote from a book written uh, by a man who lost his 25-year-old son, entitled Lamentations for a Son, says, If he was worth loving, then he is worth grieving over. There are no time limits on grief or how you experience it. Finally, I feel that when people ask how my son died, and I say an overdose, there almost seems to be a dismissive reaction. It is almost as if it instantly conjures up ideas of a criminal, a loser, or someone weak, or like they did it to themselves. It almost minimizes who they were, their value and importance. Nolan was so much more than an addict. That is not what defined him. Nolan struggled with addiction, but was so strong and courageous to face the battle. I am so very proud of my boy. Nolan was a beautiful person and was loved by so many. I refuse to let the way he passed be what defines him.